You've heard the saying, you can be comfortable while hiking or comfortable at camp, but never both. I say bullshit. What's up backpackers? I'm Dan and welcome back to Backpacking Adventures. Now on this channel, we talk about everything backpacking, hiking and gear. And if those interest you, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. So if you watch my other videos, you know that I usually am ultra light in the warmer months. Now, I usually just kind of squeak by ultra light between around eight and a half to nine and a half pounds, but I have never really reduced my pack weight down to what I really think I could. I always thought if I really decreased my weight, I would either be uncomfortable or just miserable overall at camp. I just got back from my Susquehannock trip and my base weight for that was like 9.8, 9.6, somewhere around there. It was ultra light, but I don't, it could have been lighter. It just, based on the temperatures, I could have went a lot lighter. So that got me thinking while I was on the trail, what, in what ways could I reduce my pack weight down to, I guess you call it super ultra light, maybe five, six pounds. I think when people think of ultra light or super ultra light, they really think of being going out there with the bare bones minimum and being uncomfortable. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. And there's that saying that you can be either comfortable while hiking or comfortable at camp, but never both. So I decided I'm gonna make that determination for myself. Now, I've already been on the other end of the spectrum with a 30 or 40 pound base weight for my backpack, and I am definitely not doing that again. And now I think it's time that I swing that pendulum all the way to the other side where I reduce the weight down to the bare bone minimums of what I think I can do comfortably and safely, and basically just see how I like it. So what I've done was I went through all my gear and I basically just removed some things that I think I really don't need at this time of year. And I think I reduced my weight down to a point where it's basically as light as I'm really going to get it without buying anything new. Now there is an exception to my cook kit and my pillow, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later. And I just wanna try the extreme on the ultra light side before I say that I'm never gonna do it. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this on a trip in the next few days or a week. And I'm gonna try it out and see how it goes. And just the purpose of this trip is just to see how comfortable I am, whether it's more so hiking, whether I lose any comfort at camp or both or neither. And then when I get back, I'm gonna do another video on how it all worked out. What were the best things? What were the worst things? And what's my overall opinion of it? And if I like this loadout, who knows? This may be my new warm weather gear loadout. And a couple of weeks ago, I put out a video on my gear loadout that I was taking for my six day Susquehannock trip. And this gear is pretty much close, but you're gonna notice a lot of things missing. And I'm gonna do this the same way I did my previous gear video. I have my gear here totally packed and I'm just going to basically go through the pack and unpack it in reverse order on how I pack it. And as I go through, I'm gonna put the weights on the screen. So let's get started on what's on the outside. So my pack for this is the Z-Packs Nero. On the, of course, the side pockets is I have the two smart water bottles with the sport caps. I could even have reduced it by another uh, one and a half ounces by just leaving one of the bottles and using my smart water bottle as the other bottle. However, if I go into camp dry, I do like to fill this up before I get to camp. That gives me three liters. So that's why I still stuck with that. So again, the Catadyne B-Free water filter. I have my water scoop that weighs, I don't even think it registers on my scale. It might be like one or two grams. I do have this little bit of cordage, which I forgot to mention in my last video. And this is for anything from hanging my gear to dry to um, ba basically anything if I would need to guy out something, it's, I have this extra line. I do have my bear bag hanging kit. I do have 10 Eastern Nano steaks and one of, I don't know what you'd call this, a Y steak. It's kind of like a groundhog, but it's for my main guy out for my trekking pole. Just holds a lot better. I have my poop kit, which has my trowel and my TP. I have my ditty bag, which I did reduce some things out of that. I do have my toothbrush, toothpaste. I keep it in a Ziploc zip bag because it really smells and I always get nervous the bear's gonna eat me. My body glide, which I'll probably keep on the outside of my pack. Just these little towels and these things, I use these on the Susquehannock Trail to wipe off. These are great. I have some wet fire in case I wanna make a fire in this woods wet. I have my uh, super glue, of course. 
and my bug spray. I really don't need this. I could probably reduce my weight by an ounce by this, but it's that time of year when it's buggy and I really don't want to be bugged by the bugs. And I also have my bug net. And you know, I've been taking this for years and I actually have yet to use it. I get bothered by the bugs, but I'm just too lazy to stop and put this on. Laziness. I'm probably the laziest hiker you'll ever meet. And I also have my trekking pole jack because I have the Altiplex. Need this to make my trekking poles higher. On the other side, I do have, of course, my sit pad. And this is my Gossamer Gear quarter inch pad. And this will actually be my sleeping pad. This is how I saved about 12 ounces out of my weight, is I am going to be like one of those guys that sleeps on a little foam. I'm gonna try this out. And I do think this will be the only thing that I may think is not comfortable, but we're gonna see. On my uh, left shoulder strap, I do have my Garmin InReach Mini. And of course that could be three and a half pounds that I'm not taking, but I always take that. And these are new. These are my new shoulder strap pockets by Hilltop Packs. In my last gear video, I, I used the Z-Packs uh, shoulder pouches. And because I didn't get these in the mail yet, but I'm telling you, these things are phenomenal. So you need to go check these out. These things are pretty huge. And the nice thing is, is on the mesh, I can hold a lot more and it has this drawstring so you can put a lot in there and tie it down. I do keep my hand sanitizer in there. I also will keep drink additives or whatever else in here. And the inside of it is huge. Right now I have my first aid kit and I will keep all my snacks in here for the day. And it's a roll top, which means you don't have to snap it or anything. It has the way, it's genius how the Velcro is and you can just roll it down and there it is. And the, again, these are on the Hilltop Packs website and these are called the cell phone shoulder pouch pockets with the mesh, you can get it with or without. And I got two of them and I love them. And I have the iPhone 11 Pro Max and it is swallowed by this thing. I could fit so much more in it. So I got one on each side. I normally keep my cell phone and whatever else I can up here. And I have a link in my description to their website. So go check them out. They have a lot of good stuff. And I'm also waiting for a brand new backpack from them. So they're um, still working on them. And I, I, I can't wait to see that. Um, I also carry just my normal handkerchief for wiping, wiping all that sweat off. So that's it for the outside. Let's go on the, to the inside. So like always, the first thing that I have on top is my cook kit and my food bag. So again, this is a light AF food bag. I do have one on order from Hilltops with my beautiful face on it because you can totally customize their packs and their, their bear bags. You probably saw them all over the internet anyway, but I can't wait to get mine. So in here, of course, I have my little makeshift uh, pot koozie out of just a mountain house bag. And I use this for days on the Susquehanna Trail and it worked great. And my Tokes Titanium Long Handle Spoon. And the big difference to my cook kit is I changed my stove and my cooking pot. So I am going to try and go the alcohol route. Now, my cook pot that I'd used before in the Susquehanna Trail was the Tokes 750 milliliter. So this is the Tokes 550 milliliter. And the reason why I downsize is not so much weight. It could be weight and it could be space. It's about an ounce lighter and it's about an inch shorter than the 750 milliliter. And I, you know, I don't really, this can hold two full cups of water and that is the maximum you're ever gonna need to cook a mountain house meal. And I don't even eat entire mountain house meals. I usually break them in half. So that would be eight ounces of water. I never really cook anything more than eight ounces of water. And so that's why I really downsize. So I still have my rag, which I melted, of course. I do have this little rat, uh, ooh, I do have this little scrubby. I also use it to, as a handle holder to get it off the fire. Now the difference this time around is I'm going to the alcohol and I made this little stove. This is just a Fancy Feast cat can that I emptied out and put holes in it. So with that, I also have a little wind, titanium windscreen that I cut down so it fits inside of my, my pack. And this was just from, a, I don't know, a old pie pan. And you just keep that on there. It helps, you know, with the heat and helps stabilize it when it's sitting there. And I have a measuring cup 
and of course a Bic lighter. Now, I have a fuel bottle, so it takes about one ounce to boil two cups of water. So I have two ounces in here, but I never cooked that, so it'll probably take half. I'm, I'm guessing it'll take half. So we'll try that out, this is two ounces. So this will be good for a good two days. And I did order another stove from somebody, like a real one that somebody made that's not gonna blow up in my face. It's more efficient, so I haven't gotten it yet, so I'm gonna try that out, I'm liking it. And I think even with the bottle, not with the fuel, but with the empty bottle, this thing weighs like four and a half, like 4.8 maybe ounces, so it's very light. Next is my ditty bag, and now normally I keep this on the outside of my pack, but since I have my first aid kit in my front pocket, I, I needed more space in this bag. This bag just is too big. This is, the main body is only 25 liters, but for this loadout, it's still, I have a lot of empty room, so I put this in here to kind of fill it up. And you'll see a lot of the usual suspects in here. I'll just go through them quick. Another dry, uh, dry bag from Hilltop Packs. I have my patch kit, emergency kit with matches, patches, and all that. Extra lids, big lighter, my wonderful little comb, which I love. So relaxing. Mm. Whistle, a little Swiss Army knife, my earplugs, little decadent packet, my face mask, of course, headlamp, little pencil, which in my Susquehanna video, I showed you how I kind of use that, my wallet, my little thermometer slash compass. And I do have eye drops. I just had eye surgery, so I have to carry these with me. I no longer have to carry glasses or contact cases or anything like that. Um, but I do need to carry some eye drops because the side effect is you get dry eye. And for my electronics, again, it's this little light AF bag or light Smith bag. And I don't have any camera gear with this because I'm thinking that if I really want to try the ultralight, I may just film with my cell phone and just not bring any camera gear. So I'm still debating that, um, so we'll see. Um, I do have my Anchor 67 milliamp. Now, if I don't take any kind of rechargeable things like my, my camera and the extra batteries and everything, this is 6,700 milliamps. So this can get me by with one, maybe two nights. If not, I may just take my 10 milliamp, 10,000 milliamp, and this is 6,700. Um, just some headphones. A uh, little rag for either my camera or my phone to wipe off the lenses. Cord for my headlamp and a cord for my iPhone. And next uh, again is my pack towel. This kind of won out between the battle of the buff and this. And I used this, I never even touched my buff again, so I left the buff behind. I'm taking this, and if I would leave this, that would be another ounce and a half. Next is my tent, which is the Z-Pax Altiplex. That Altiplex worked out great in the rain on the trail. It, so far, I'm really loving that tent. Have my helium rain jacket, of course. The next thing is the other change, which is my pillow. And I got this from Lightsmith. I can't remember the name of these, but I bought them like a pack of three. And it's a pillow. And you blow it up with this tube. And you, of course, you remove the tube. But when I tried this at home, this thing was a lot bigger wider and taller than my other pillow and it weighs two ounces less. So this is another way I save some weight. So I'm really uh, excited to try this out. So next is my Z-Pax Medium Plus stuff sack. And in here, I have my extra clothes and my quilt. So my quilt is the hammock ear burrow, it's 40 degrees. This thing worked out perfectly. I have my Peloton 97 fleece pullover. This is my base layer and it's a fleece for if I'm hiking in the morning or in the evening, I can put this over my shirt to help keep me warm. And if it does get cold, because you notice there's no puffy in this uh, loadout. So if I use this with my shirt in conjunction with my rain jacket, this thing, this will keep me warm down to 40 something degrees easily. Next are my extra pair of darn tough socks. I have my strap for my quilt and I have my enlightened equipment Wind pants is just a layer from warmth for my legs or if there's a bunch of bugs. And now it's for my worn clothes. And of course, again, it's gonna be my black diamond trekking poles, carbon, alpine carbon cork. And I, this is where I do keep my tripod. This is my uh, UltraPod Mini. 
and I do have the little attachment for the cell phone if I'm going to use my cell phone for video. If it's gonna be my camera, I'll unscrew that and my, just screw my camera on here, but that's where I keep it, right on my trekking pole. And of course, my shoes of choice are the Hoka 1-1 Stinson ATR 5s. Now I did learn, I learned this through a subscriber who commented on my one of my videos, that they do have the Stinson's ATR 6 instead of the 5, the 6s are out. So I may look them up, look into them. Um, they're just a newer model of this. So if I love these, I'm pretty sure I will love those as well. So, so for my shorts that I'm gonna be wearing, again, these are my Under Armour uh, running shorts. I guess they have a vent. And they did have the lining. I tried that on the Susquehanna Trail and it did not work out well for me. It caused all kinds of chafing in my legs. It got, I had to walk with my leg spread. I had to break out the A&D ornament. Body guide didn't work. And what I ended up doing was stopping right in the middle of the trail, taking my knife out with little scissors and I cut the lining out of my pants while I was standing there on the trail. That was the only relief I had. So I cut them out because I love these shorts so much. And instead, I'm going to try, I do have the ex officio regular briefs, but I think I'm gonna try the boxer briefs. Everyone says that stops chafing, so I got, picked these up and I'm gonna try those. And the socks I'm gonna be hiking in are the short, darn tough socks. I really like these, I dug them in. These things worked out really well. Easy to take off, easy to put on, because I'm lazy and fat, and I don't feel like struggling with my socks at night. And then of course, my Outdoor Research Wanderer short sleeve button down shirt. This thing worked out very well on the trail. So, so here's my gear. Here's all of it. The base weight for this is 6.65 ounces. I could even go lighter by a couple ounces, probably three. And if I would go no cook and take one bottle and remove one bottle and just use my Be Free and get rid of my camp towel, that would be getting rid of a whole nother half a pound. I would be down into the five pound mark. But um, I'd, I'd rather have the water capacity, the towel to wipe off and the dry things, and the cook kit for just making hot coffee in the morning. I really don't need to cook food, but I just have to have coffee. I could drink cold coffee, of course, but so I think 6.65 pounds is very well light enough. And at 6.65 pounds, you may be asking yourself, is this safe? Yes, I, I, I think this is totally safe. In the fall, would I take this load out? No, I probably would make sure I'd add my puffy just to be warm enough. Do I think it's comfortable? We'll see. Like I said, the only piece that I may question the comfortability of it is this small foam sleeping pad. And again, I'll be taking a trip of this. I'll be doing a video of the trip and talking about everything as I do it, as I go. And then I'll have another video kind of in retrospect to give my final opinions on what I think. So let me know what you think. Do you think this is totally crazy? Do you think I covered all my bases with the gear that I'm gonna be taking? Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm really interested in knowing what you guys think. So now if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and give it a thumbs up and share this video. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you after my trip.